good morning. This is Derek Hengeveld. Um, I'm, I work for a company called LoadPath, um, and I'd like to acknowledge my uh, co-authors on this presentation, uh, Jake Moulton, who is also with LoadPath, and then also uh, Stefano Capucci, who's with NASA JPL. Uh, the title of the talk is uh, Reduced Order Modeling for Rapid Mission Planning of the Mars 2020 Helicopter. So essentially, LoadPath, um, we've developed a software tool called Veritrek, which basically allows you to convert thermal, thermal models and specifically thermal desktop models into a reduced order form, which allows you to run models uh, very quickly. Um, NASA JPL identified uh, that capability as something that would really be valuable for the Mars 2020 program. And so the talk here is basically taking you through the Mars 2020 mission, kind of the, the background of that. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the Mars 2020 helicopter, um, and then we'll talk about some of the challenges with the Mars 2020 helicopter mission, um, not only with the, the thermal design, but also with uh, mission operations. And we'll see how uh, Veritrek and reduced order modeling fits in uh, to help, uh, help with that mission. So with that, I'm gonna um, get going. Um, if you do have questions, feel free to put those in the chat uh, function. I'll try to respond to those um, in real time if I can. Um, otherwise, I'll, I'll get to those at the end of the talk. All right, so Mars 2020 is a uh, NASA mission uh, that recently launched. I think it was July 30th that it launched, um, and it includes, uh, kind of revolves around the, the Perseverance rover. You can see an image of that in the upper right. We can see the Perseverance rover. It includes uh, a number of scientific instruments, including imagers and spectrometers. Uh, there's a weather station on there. Um, and really, its mission is to search for signs of life and also do sample collection. Um, one very uh, uh, incredible part of the, the mission is a tech demonstration uh, of a helicopter. You can see the helicopter in the upper right, it's basically at the, the bottom of the rover, um, and it's called Mars Ingenuity. Uh, it's a, again, it's a tech demonstration. Uh, it's basically going to be situated in the belly of the rover. Uh, and so once, once the rover lands, uh, February uh, 2021, uh, the Mars helicopter or Ingenuity is going to deploy from the belly and, you know, hit, hit Mars um, uh, ground. And so the primary mission of the, the Mars helicopter is a couple. Number one is to demonstrate flight in Mars's atmosphere. And that's a pretty, pretty big challenge. It's a, it's a thin atmosphere. It's about 1% of Earth's. Um, we're also trying to uh, also trying to, to demonstrate miniaturized flying technology and autonomous operation, and so there's a, you know, a lot of um, a lot of new uh, demonstrations that will be happening with um, Ingenuity. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the Mars 2020 helicopter. Its architecture, it's it's pretty small and lightweight. It's about 1.8 kilogram. It's solar powered. It is uh, based on wireless communication between itself and the rover. Um, it includes two counter-rotating um, uh, blades. They are carbon fiber blades that rotate at about 2,400 RPM. Uh, this this uh, helicopter is equipped with computers, navigation sensors, and uh, multiple cameras. We see some of the components here. On the left-hand side, we see the exterior components. We see the, the legs. Uh, the fuselage and the, the blades, and then on the top is the solar array and transmitter. In the middle, we see the uh, propulsion components, including the motors and servos. And then on the right-hand side, we see some of the internal electronics, including the cameras, uh, some of the uh, sensors, including an inclinometer, altimeter, uh, and then, the, the, of course, the batteries, which is a very critical component and one of the, the major uh, areas that we were uh, using the thermal modeling for. All right, so the Mars 2020 helicopter operation, uh, basically solar power charges the batteries. Internal heaters maintain operational temperatures during the cold Martian night. Uh, the, uh, the helicopter is going to be placed in the Yazero crater, which I think gets down to uh, overnight, can get down to minus 90 degrees C. So obviously a very, um, very challenging thermal environment. And so those battery heaters are very critical to maintain a, you know, maintain our, our minimum uh, allowable temperatures. Um, after receiving commands from Earth, those commands are gonna be relayed through the rover, and then a test flight is gonna be autonomously uh, performed, uh, you know, with, with no uh, real-time input. Um, so there's multiple challenges here. 
Uh, one is uh, this is a very lightweight uh, um, uh, helicopter, so it's mass power constrained, which obviously for thermal can be very challenging. Uh, it's volume constricted. Uh, it has multiple power modes. Uh, again, we're trying to operate this autonomously. We have a very challenging cold environment that we're trying to deal with. So there's you know, um, significant thermal challenges involved with the Mars 2020 helicopter. All right, so now we're starting to get into uh, the motivation for reduced order model. And on this slide, what we're looking at is basically kind of a day in the life of the helicopter mission ops. And what we see is uh, this image or this uh, illustration in the lower right kind of shows uh, communication between Earth and the rover and between the rover and the helicopter. And what we see is that in the morning, uh, Earth will communicate with the rover. The rover is going to give its command to the helicopter. The helicopter is then going to, um, on flight days, it's going to perform its uh, mission. Uh, typical flights will be maybe on the order of around 15 minutes. And then it will relay any sort of telemetry back to the rover. The rover will relay all sorts of telemetry back to Earth. And really the biggest challenge is uh, kind of once we receive telemetry, we have just a limited amount of time to act on that telemetry for mission planning for the next day. And so there's a number of things that are happening uh, behind the scenes that have to, have to happen in a very limited uh, window. Uh, first of all, based on the most recent and the, the best uh, information that we have, we would like to correlate our thermal model. Uh, we saw the, the thermal model a few slides ago. It's the high fidelity thermal desktop model. Uh, we'd like to correlate that with the most recent uh, environmental uh, telemetry that we have. Uh, again, the, the rover includes uh, a pretty intricate um, weather station. And so we want to do model correlation. Uh, also, we want to uh, evaluate multiple um, basically mission op scenarios. And within each of those mission op scenarios, we want to uh, basically optimize uh, thermal po power predictions and basically thermal power planning. Uh, just imagine we have our, our Mars helicopter. It's been sitting on the ground. Uh, it's in a cold condition. We have um, uh, heaters that are trying to maintain its minimum temperature, and we have a very uh, limited uh, battery budget uh, to use. So we, we certainly want to minimize the amount of uh, heater energy um, that we're using, and so we could we could warm up our batteries. Um, if we warm them up at the perfect amount of time, that's going to minimize the amount of uh, required survival heat. But if we warm it up too soon, we're going to overshoot and we're going to use too much or, or more uh, energy than what we'd like to. And if we don't warm it up fast enough, uh, our basically our system is going to be too cold for flight. So really what we want to do is try to optimize uh, the battery warm up uh, prior to flight. And so there's a lot of analysis that, that has to happen behind the scenes. And in a typical situation, we could use traditional um, techniques, traditional thermal modeling techniques. But here, the challenge is that we're trying to do this in a very short time window, you know, on the matter of, uh, on the order of hours uh, before we need to send those commands back to the helicopter. And again, um, it's going to operate autonomously. And so because of that, because of the short window and the, the amount of analysis that we were trying to do, um, uh, NASA JPL and, and um, us, Load Path, we, we partnered and um, put together a reduced order model of their, um, their high fidelity thermal model. All right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, Veritrek and the reduced order modeling process. Uh, essentially, uh, it's a three-step process. And right now, Veritrek works with thermal desktop, 6.0 and greater uh, thermal models. And really what you have to do is you start with the, your thermal desktop model. So any sort of high fidelity thermal desktop model will do, again, as long as it's 6.0 and greater. We then have our, uh, what we call our Veritrek creation tool, which basically puts its hooks into your thermal model and enables you as a user to semi-automatically convert that into a reduced order form. Uh, it doesn't do that through nodal, um, reduction. We basically do sampling and then data fitting. Uh, if you were part of some of the talks that we had uh, earlier today or yesterday, you would have seen some of the, the examples of how that's done. Um, if you are interested, I'd, I'd be happy to talk offline about that. But essentially what we're doing is with the creation tool, we're converting your thermal desktop model into a reduced order form through sampling and data fitting. At that point, 
we then have a reduced order model, and then we can do we can do useful things with um, with our re, uh, reduced order model. We use our Veritrek exploration tool to do that. I have a very quick um, video of what that looks like, so hopefully that'll come up. Yep, here we go. Uh, so this is the Veritrek exploration tool. This is after we've imported a reduced order model into it. Essentially, what we've done is we've we've pulled in uh, symbol values in this middle section, and so what the user is doing is changing those symbol values. And so you can see every time we're moving a slider, we're basically changing a symbol value. What we see on the right-hand side is a response to that. In this particular case, we're looking at a response surface. Um, and what's going on behind the scenes is that we're essentially generating 400 um, uh, similar thermal desktop results uh, in near real time. And you can imagine using traditional methods to generate 400 simulation results would be quite challenging. It would uh, be computationally expensive, but by first converting our model into a reduced order form, we essentially are able to do that in near real time. So every time we move in a slider, we're generating 400 simulation results. We're using those results to generate this response surface. So hopefully you can kind of see the, the, the reason behind using a reduced order form um, because, it's, uh, uh, because of its speed. All right, so just a, a quick slide on where where this reduced order modeling has been used, uh, we've been working with a number of different uh, customers, including you know, a number of NASA centers, uh, JPL, of course, uh, NASA Marshall um, is another user on some of their lunar lander work. Um, we've done some work with NASA Johnson in the past. Um, and so there's many applications of Veritrek, um, whether it's early in the design, design stages uh, where we might do trade studies. Um, later on in the design, we might want to do sensitivity studies. Uh, we have a correlation capability that's coming out where we can help um, do more rapid thermal model correlation using our reduced order models. And then later in the design life, um, we can use uh, our optimization analysis for a final design verification. And then, of course, this presentation, we're using Veritrek as basically a, a mission ops tool, so you know, real-time analysis. All right, so let's talk a little bit about some of the, the past work. Um, here is uh, some of the work that we did with NASA JPL a few years ago. This is kind of our initial attempt at using reduced order modeling um, uh, for the Mars helicopter. And so in 2018, we, we put together a paper that kind of summarized some of this work. Uh, what we were doing back then was trying to use reduced order modeling to look at um, sensitivity of the thermal model. And what we're trying to correlate is trying to look at of the thermal inputs in our model, which of those drove um, various output factors, which were most significant. And we can see an example of that in the upper right. This is using our sensitivity analysis. Uh, we have a number of different input factors. You can see those on the, basically on the x-axis of that plot. See things like a, uh, such as gas gas or battery set point, uh, heat loads, and some conductivity values. And and by the shape or the length of each of those bars, you can see which of those are more uh, are, are driving this output response, which in this case is survival energy. And so part of this work that we did in 2018 is trying to look at those relationships between input factors and an output response and trying to identify of the input factors we have, which were more, most significant. And by doing that, we knew where to focus our attention to in improving the thermal design. So that was one aspect of this work. The other aspect was uh, looking um, or using the reduced order model uh, to do a final assessment verification of the thermal design. So once we had the design locked in place, we could use uh, basically the, the thermal model, create a reduced order model of that, um, provide some range of input factors that we expect to operate in, and then basically just throw thousands of simulations at it, and we can generate plots that we see in the lower, lower right. And here we see uh, you know, a number of different plots, uh, a number of different points. Each of those points present, uh, represents one simulation. Uh, and we're seeing two output responses here. In this case, it's a, a battery minimum temperature and a battery maximum temperature. We see a keep out zone, and we can see that for most of the simulation results, uh, they, they fall within the keep out zone. But we do have a couple uh, outliers there. So this was probably uh, kind of uh, earlier in the work when we um, you know, had some outliers, um, but as the, as the design evolved, you know, we wanted to make sure that we kept all of our simulations within that keep out zone. All right, so now let's, let's turn our attention to the Mars 2020 helicopter rocks, so kind of the current 
uh, reduced order model. This was a, a reduced order model that we created um, different than the one that we created in 2018. And this is the reduced order model that well, will be used for um, helping out with mission ops planning. Uh, this uh, basically includes eight input factors. So it includes some environmental input factors, and it also includes a, a number of different um, battery heater uh, parameters. And what, what this does in combination using some environmental parameters, it allows us to correlate the thermal model quickly uh, to changing Mars environmental conditions. And then by um, having a number of different battery heater set point parameters, uh, we can basically look at multiple uh, warm up scenarios. So do we, do we warm this, the batteries up um, very quickly? Do we use a step response? Uh, there's a number of different configurations uh, that we can apply very quickly and we can evaluate very quickly to determine optimal um, warm-up configurations. Uh, Stefano Capucci, who's the, you know, with NASA JPL, you know, did the, the bulk of the thermal modeling on this and you know, was instrumental in coming up with you know, a really, really great way of, of applying symbols and registers um, that could also be applied to a reduced order model. Uh, this ROM includes 19 output responses and uh, includes subsystem temperatures and also battery energy. Again, battery energy is one of the more critical components that we were uh, trying to track. At the end of the day, the reduced order model is based on 3,600 training runs um, and 144 test runs. Um, really, the, the number of training runs in this case was really driven by the, the schedule that we had. We had multiple months to um, develop and provide the reduced order model, and we probably could have, could have stopped much earlier uh, with a much lower number of training runs, uh, but we decided that, hey, we had scheduled to do this. We had a, an available thermal desktop license. Um, in this case, we ended up using two thermal desktop licenses to develop training runs. Let's just keep um, generating training data to make this thing um, you know, as accurate as we can within the time that we had. And so we see some example um, uh, results on the right-hand side. And basically, all of these plots, we'll see a, a number more on the next slide, basically show ROM prediction results on the y-axis and then what we would call, call truth results or thermal desktop model results on the x-axis. And these are based on 144 randomized uh, test runs. And so what we do is we just, once the ROM is built, we go back and we randomly select a uh, test point. We run the thermal desktop model to generate a, what we, again, what we call a truth result. And then we run the, the reduced order model with the same input factor settings and we compare the two. We'd really like to see that those test points fall on a 45 degree, degree line and you know, for the most part, they, they do. There's a little bit of noise, which we, you know, we kind of see that in the plot in the upper right. On the lower right, there's even less noise. Um, and so on the next slide, we basically see a collection of, of, of the results, both temperature results and battery energy results. And for the most part, they fall along that uh, 45 degree line. Uh, for example, in the, lower, in the lower left, this is a uh, uh, sensor uh, temperature, minimum temperature that we were tracking. And you can see that the mean residual is, you know, very, pretty much zero, and the standard deviation of the residual. So again, the residual being just the, the subtraction of the ROM and the thermal desktop results is, you know, roughly 0 0.04 uh, degrees C. So it's it's a uh, you know very good agreement. We see a little bit more noise for the um, in the upper left for the battery uh, minimum temperature, uh, but again, there the standard deviation of the residuals is. You know, roughly half a degree C, and so the results that we came up with with the reduced order model were were acceptable, um, and so that uh, reduced order model at this point was packaged up and delivered to NASA JPL, and you know will be will be used next year once uh, uh, once the helicopter lands. All right. So with that, you know, we covered uh, kind of the motivation behind uh, using reduced order modeling for the Mars helicopter mission. Um, and you know the reasons behind it considerably speeds up model correlation and allows us to explore thermal responses for different operation scenarios. Um, and so uh, you know with that, I'll take any questions. Um, I guess before I do, just want to acknowledge you know the team. Um, I definitely want to acknowledge uh, you know my co-authors, uh, Jake Moulton with LoadPath and also Stefano Capucci. Um, you know, they were um, very instrumental uh, in, in developing these slides and also want to <laughs> thank the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory uh, for their support and uh, um, collaboration on this. All right, thanks. I'll take questions.
You can post your questions for Dr. Hengeveld in the chat on the right of the screen. All right, looks like there was a question on no RHUs plus aerogel like in Pathfinder or MER. Unfortunately, I'm not the, you know, I don't have um, enough in-depth knowledge uh, to answer that question. Um, you know, I could refer you to uh, Stefano, um, or if you want to, you can reach out to me. Um, I will post my email address and you can send that to me and I can, you know, kind of point you in the right direction to get that question answered. All right, the question was, what, what kind of ROMs do you use? Uh, proper orthogonal decomposition, et cetera. Uh, it's kind of part of our secret sauce um, with the uh, ROM development. Um, I will say we use Gaussian processes. You know, I won't get go into too much detail on, uh, you know, the specifics of that, but that, you know, that's generally the approach that we take that's been, uh, you know, very successful for us. Thank you very much. Um, I have one question. How how many yeah. charge discharge cycles and life are they expecting out of the uh, helicopter? Do you know? I don't know that that kind of information. You know, I, I again, I could probably put you in contact with Stefano. Um, you know, if he'd be willing to answer that question. Um, but yeah, I don't have that kind of information. So feel free to you know email me, and I can you know put you in contact with with Stefano. Great, thanks. We'll just take a few more minutes to wait for other questions yeah, online. No okay. Yeah, there's, there's an additional question. Um, what is the typical flight time? Uh, yeah, good, good question. Um, uh, my understanding is that the typical flight is going to be around 15 minutes or so, a pretty short flight, um, but you can imagine a pretty lightweight helicopter with, you know, um, limited um, uh, battery energy. So, yeah, I think around 15 minutes. 